Hi everybody, Jackson, ASB professional. How are you all today? Um, this is going to be tip number seven, uh, and today I'm going to be covering uh, the subject of public spaces protection orders. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about myself, if you've not seen the previous six videos, um, my background is predominantly in policing, where I did 20 years uh, serving with West Midlands Police. Um, mainly specialising in sort of neighbour policing, community policing. I then went on and worked for a housing association in the West Midlands, where I was employed as a community safety manager for two and a half years. Um, and then uh, more recently, I've been working for the last two years for a local authority as their ASB manager. Um, just a little bit of um, a disclaimer from me. Um, obviously, these are my own personal views always consult with your own sort of uh, policies and procedures and also obviously refer to your own legal policies and, and, and local procedures um, before you obviously take any action. So public spaces protection orders. Um, probably going to be a little bit controversial about this one today. Um, at the local authority that I work at, we've only got um, two main sort of town centre um, public space protection orders. Um, and they tend to cover um, alcohol, um, general poor behaviour. Um, and I think on the on the one we've got in the one town centre, um, it actually covers um, aggressive begging as well, but only within a certain distance um, from uh, a cash point. Now, I think public spaces protection orders do have value. I think in the right areas, they can certainly work. Um, when I set up the ones where I work now, what I wanted to look at was just a different approach to enforcement. And normally, I think the normal procedure would be to um, issue a fixed penalty notice. Um, to any offenders that are obviously suspected of, of, of committing offences. And what I wanted to do was, because predominantly the sort of people that we were picking up for the offences were people um, that desperately needed um, some help and support, I wanted a much more harm-centred approach to how we tackled that enforcement. So what I put in place was, um, rather than a fixed penalty notice we put in a suspected offence ticket book um, which obviously is very similar to a fixed penalty notice in terms of how it looks um, but it makes it clear to that suspect that um, initially um, they're not going to be served with the fixed penalty notice we are going to assess their needs and we run um, and refer every individual through to our case management uh, meeting that we run every couple of weeks. And then a group of partners will obviously look at the, that individual, see if there are any sort of needs, um, any sort of um, things that we can do to try and help them around, you know, alcohol addiction, drug addiction, mental health, um, any kind of aspects around that, um, and then try. Um, you know, help that individual. Um, clearly, they are trapped, and if they persistently come to note, obviously we would look at you know issuing fixed penalty or um, you know taking them through the courts process. But it's not the first thing that I look at when I'm approaching these kind of um, offences. Um, you know, as I say, it is very much that harm centred approach that we that we try and take. And I feel that, it, you know, it is the best approach. We've put together a very robust uh, investigation plan process for the officers that are dealing with breaches. Um, all the officers are briefed in terms of what they can do, what they can't do and how it all works. Um, and then my team will process um, any of the sort of um, offenders if we do go down the route of, you know, the court system, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think it works 
quite well. The one thing that I was going to pick up on today was that, as I've already said, we've only got two in in the uh, the city where I work. Um, and when I sort of looked at public spaces protection orders in a bit more detail, um, as practitioners that work with local authorities and, and obviously with other ASP professionals, you'll know that they are, PSPOs are subject to, um, you know, the three yearly reviews where you've got to sort of do another consultation and you've got to do, you know, all that work around it and making sure that you can justify um, renewing that, that PSPO. And it kind of got me thinking around, are PSPOs needed in every single instance? Um, and I think the answer to that question is no. And I think that's where the controversial little bit comes in, really. What I've done now is I've devised, um, in particular around um, some of our individuals that are constantly causing issues around alcohol. And um, we put together a bit of a, a stage plan where we can, um, you know, again, look at that harm centred approach, but also, you know, look at helping that individual. Um, and obviously, if they sort of refuse all help and support, then no doubt we will go down the um, enforcement route with that individual or those individuals. So it was really kind of getting the message across. And I suppose that's what the tip is today is that before you go down the route of a public spaces protection order, think about all the work that that does involve and the responsibility of having, you know, that that PSP within your own geographical responsibility um, and also you know look at alternatives you know it doesn't always fit um, and you know I think it's important that we have an open mind when we're tackling antisocial behavior um, and that we don't just go with you know what what the trend is I suppose and look at alternatives now I'm pretty confident that the, the plan that we are now going to implement around um, drinking alcohol uh, and the offences that are associated with that will have a much better result long term than, you know, a short term issuing a fixed penalty notice that probably doesn't get paid. And then you've got to go through all that that process. So I think the other thing for me as well with PSPOs is you've always got to be mindful of displacement. And displacement is always a big, big concern with PSPOs that, you know, you have your own geographical zone that, you know, you you obviously run as the PSPO. And then lo and behold, because of that, you then see displacement where I think with my plan um, that I think will work, um, you can quite adequately cover that without the need to go back and review that PSPO and obviously sort out another consultation um and you know go through the sort of the democratic process obviously you have to go through to get that PSBO varied so it's just food for thought really i'm not saying it's the right way i'm not saying it's the wrong way i'm just saying you know just think about things longer term you know i think sometimes we can look very short term with PSPOs um and i think for me now very much my approach with a lot of the stuff that we do on my team it's all about the longer term sort of fix rather than the shorter term fix and that kind of sticking plaster um mentality really where i think you know we're trying to come away from that um because that's how we're going to make communities better and that's how we're going to sort of eradicate asb within our towns and cities so that's my tip for today covering pspos I will be back in a couple of three weeks with my next tip, um, which will be around public sector equality duty. So look out for that one. Um, if you like the content today, please um, like it, subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, subscribe to uh, follow me on Twitter, um, link up on LinkedIn. Um, if you've got any questions, my email's on there. I'm more than happy to take questions via email. Uh, and my work's telephone number is on my LinkedIn profile too. So please, um, you know, tap into um, my knowledge and I'm more than happy to help. Thanks a lot, guys, and I will catch you all soon.